Greetings, life forms, wherever you're receiving us. This is Justin. And Matt. And I'm Woken, Landon Donia. <laughs> oh. oh. Mr. Mr. Landon Hardy over there. <laughs> Landon, I know, you know, um, as, as we kick off episode 81 of Nerd News Cafe, and by the way, it is March 22nd, um, <laughs> I well, I just want to roll right into this because since that was since that was the nickname of the day, uh, Landon and I were going back and forth on Twitter about this this week's Monday Night Raw, and I told him this was the first one I'd watched in quite a while, aside from the oh. one I attended, <laughs> aside from the one that I attended, which is a totally different experience going and seeing it because you're not seeing all this video stuff, not so much of it. And I don't know, I was wondering how do you think they handled the ultimate deletion situation in the in the um, arena like did they well, just do something else uh it's interesting how they handled it because you talk about when you go to these uh live wwe events if something happens backstage uh or out of the arena generally they put it up on you know the big titan tron and you watch it in the arena as usa aired the final deletion it was not aired at all in the actual arena like while the final deletion was going on i think i read that ronda rousey came out and gave uh, dana brooks a hip toss and then braun Strowman came out and beat up elias for like the seventh week in a row i think he think he finally dropped an entire uh, guitar center on him uh this week (laughs) but it's it's interesting the way wwe is handling the final deletion just Period. It's like uh, they cut it from their 90 minute Hulu uh, version that's posted every week of Raw. So if you didn't watch it live or if you didn't uh, DVR it, you have to go to like YouTube and watch several videos to put the final deletion together because WWE is like pretty much like, yeah, we ran it. it. It's almost like it it didn't happen. It's like the Star Wars holiday special. (laughs) <laughs> but unlike the uh, Star Wars holiday special, it seems like the final deletion is getting a lot of positive response from wrestling fans online. I know I know you had some issues with it, but like you said, this was the first episode of Raw you've seen you've seen on television in, in a long a while. time. Yeah. So this was the outlier. This was not the normal. Yeah, and, and I didn't think so. I kind of feel for fans in your situation. What I liked about it is, A, it's different from everything else that's run out there Monday and Tuesday and Sundays on WWE pay-per-views. It feels different from every segment where it's like, all right, well, this is going to be a contract signing. And if you've watched wrestling for more than six weeks, you know, if there's a contract signing, somebody's going to go through that damn table. And, and it, and it feels fresher than everybody getting out there and, you know, cutting these, you know, I'm going to say something I'm not supposed to say in the back and the back's not going to like it, but I'm going to tell you the fans, the way it is. It's like, I like my wrestling to be dumb and fun and not take itself too seriously. And okay. what Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt did on Monday, they embraced the ridiculousness. They knew it was dumb and goofy. And they and they did it and regardless. It. And, and 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 heck, I think they might have done it because it was dumb and, and crazy. And you can tell they're having fun and it just stands out so much to everything else WWE is doing. So that's part of the reason I liked it. Okay, so that was a little taste of near fall radio for everybody. Exactly, buttmushchips dot com, bitches. By the way, uh, we are going to have an episode of near fall radio between now and WrestleMania, so keep an eye on buttmushchips dot com and also this fine podcast. Yeah, we because will. Much that like one, the NWO, I'm doing a takeover. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna throw that up on the stream for everybody, so you get a little taste of near fall radio and a little crossover action. Uh, hey, crossovers are appropriate. It is March Madness, so. Uh, you know, this is a different kind of crossover, but... Uh, and uh, speaking of crossovers, I've seen the meme online, Marvel, quote, Infinity Wars is the biggest crossover there's ever been, so... Yeah, so, well, surprise, surprise. We all knew that. <laughs> thanks thanks for the update. Though the best part is, like, people will respond, like, pictures of that one episode where the Power Rangers met the Ninja Turtles, so it's like, that, that was a pretty good crossover, or the episode, I think, Gilligan met Al for some yeah. crap. Yeah, so... <laughs> Gilligan Mel. or the entire you have cats on the side. No, no, no. The, <laughs> now here's here's a real one. So Mork was on Happy Days. There we go. That, that was the that was the biggest crossover of all time. That was a pretty big one. Yeah. Did or, Family Ties and Growing Pains crossover? I assume they did. Like like I assume all those uh, ABC TGIF shows they crossed over it at, at one point. So you could sell tickets to Disney World. I'm assuming. <laughs> and. It, <laughs> All 
one service of tickets to the mouse. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's talk drinks really fast. That was all prologue, and now we can get into the real show. Yeah, sorry. This is what happens when I talk about wrestling. We go to, right. we go down a dark hole, and 30 minutes later, like, what the hell yeah, just happened? That was fun. Kind of like the final deletion. <laughs> We're all going to come back reincarnated. That's what's happening now. So, uh, <laughs> Landon, what are you drinking over there? You got whiskey again? I do have whiskey. I think I'm going to hold it off till the weekend, so I'm just drinking some boring-ass beer. Oh, that is boring. Coors Light? No. I, I said boring, so yes. Okay, nailed it. So based on last week's episode, I thought I was really good on whiskey. So so who knows? I <laughs> might go break that out here in a second. Podcast. So to be fair, I'm awesome on whiskey all the time. Yeah, that's that's what you think. Podcasting gummy <laughs> <Yes>. bear juice. <laughs> Just like a wise man once said, what do they expect us to record a uh, great podcast with giant cups of sobriety? <laughs> right. Matt, are you drinking some fun stuff over there? No, I just got a Trader Joe's Mandarin Orange Sparkling Water. Whoa, fancy you. Fancy me. (laughs) And Um, 33 delicious ounces. At least you're watching your girlish figure. You know, no cows probably. Um, Double girl figure. (laughs) (laughs) But We were debating this before, but uh, I've got Bojangle Sweet Tea tonight. So uh, I find it to be pretty good. Although... I drink a lot more unsweet tea lately. A lot of the the sweet tea, for those of you who are listening to us from somewhere outside of the South, um, sweet. if you order tea, you're probably going to get sweet tea when you come to this area. And whatever you imagine the sugar level in that tea to be, you might want to multiply that by about 10, because that's, <laughs> that's about where we put it here in the South. Um, Bojangles mm-hmm. is no exception. And this is, this is, it's like drinking syrup, to be honest. It's I was weird. about to say it's if it's, it's at a syrup level, like yeah. just before it thickens, you've got the recipe right. Or should I say syrup? Excuse me. Syrup. Syrup. No, nope, it's syrup. It's, like it's, syrup. Syrup. it's syrup. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got it right the first time then. You did. <laughs> um I was telling the guys before we got started today that uh, I didn't do any kind of prep work today because they promised me they had plenty to talk about. So we've already kicked it off with wrestling. Um, and now I want to get to something that Matt told us that he had watched, um, which is a movie that premiered just a couple of weeks ago. If you watch the Oscars, there was a group of people that were watching this movie and they got interrupted by Jimmy Kimmel and a host of other actors and actresses that would have made me totally forget what movie I was watching. But Matt, you saw A Wrinkle in Time on purpose. Uh, (laughs) yes. Okay. I didn't pay for it oh, that's, oh i was gonna say um, did you mispronounce black panther <laughs> i didn't but okay I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you um a quick story so our realtor um does a party every year of some sorts or some thing this year she rented out a theater uh at our local uh venue here mm-hmm. And uh, let us let all her clients watch a movie, which is a wrinkle in time because it had to be more kid friendly. Okay. So that's why I got to see that. Um, coming out of it, um, there were a couple of my my daughter's friends who were like, "Oh, we just got out of Black Panther," and I was like, "I wish I just got out of." Black <laughs> <laughs> this I'm living movie. vicariously through you, twelve year old girl. Wait, exactly. <laughs> I was like. Oh, I'm like now I'm on, and now I'm probably on some government watch list. <laughs> you were anyway, so <laughs> I can't believe that you wouldn't think you were. It's true. Yeah, fair enough. He's got you there. So, it. I mean, I remember this book being read to me when I was in elementary school. Mm-hmm. I remember some of the book. I remember I mostly remember the library teacher and wondering if I could sleep and she wouldn't notice. But <laughs> I was like, I remember this book being read to me, and I swear there were rainbows and unicorns in it there are no rainbows and unicorns <laughs> you dreamed that part buddy i must have i <laughs> must you do have nap. oprah so let me tell you so oprah's in it mm-hmm. still a great actress let's not deny that i mean she's done some good roles but i think her eyebrows in this movie have really really taken the cake but, and her <laughs> career with it i was gonna say so <laughs> the, the real star of the movie could, oprah's eyebrows <laughs> Oprah's sparkly glitter eyebrows at all moments. Maybe they're I running could not for stop president. staring at them. I have heard some early uh, Oscar buzz for her eyebrows. So, you know. 
Best supporting actress, I hear. They're gonna they're gonna win. Vegas these. has her, her eyebrows were five just months. insane. <laughs> Out of control eyebrows. Okay, and that's your review of a wrinkle. That's in time. it. It's just it's just eyebrow. No, I mean, so they've tried to take a Marvel stance like with this movie. I will say, instead of a modern one, because it's very fantastical. And they try to explain it to you in different ways. And, I mean, the whole movie, I'm like, where's Chris Pine? Right. Well, that's what they where's were wondering. Where's Captain Kirk? Mm-hmm. Waiting on Captain Kirk. Paging <laughs> And, I mean, Captain he's in Kirk. the movie quite a bit. And he does a, a good job. But, I mean, the movie's okay, but it hits all the beats. You know, it is very, this is the lesson. These are the things you're, you're looking for. We're, we're not letting you think at all about anything this is what's happening so there are we, some surprises in it i did not see coming like um galifianakis just showed up out of nowhere oh okay <laughs> like like was was that scheduled or did, or did he just wander onto the set? I he think just wandered on he didn't i mean he kind of looked like he was in costume for another movie <laughs> and he was in there he's like so i'm gonna do this part and they're like okay what you know the- and he does a part. What was the name of that movie where he was like the he was like some kind of a uh, coordinator of some sort of a guinea pig secret agent team? Like, oh ma- my god, G Force! That <laughs> is the only movie my son has left. Like, we <laughs> left the movie. He, we got popcorn and coke, and he, you know, he got this little kids tray, and I think he was like maybe seven, maybe eight. And we're, he's eating it, and he looks up at me about midway through this movie, and I mean, it is god awful. <laughs> and I'm just sitting through it, you know, because I'm I'm trying to be a good dad. And uh, he looks up at me, and goes, "Can we go?" I said, "Absolutely, absolutely, we can go." <laughs> and we bailed. How is that wow. not a career killer for Galifianakis? I'll never, I'll never know. Um, but but anyway, so so Galifianakis wanders on. That was a surprise. He's, but- I mean, he's on there, and like I said, every. When I say it hits the beats, it's like, oh, this happens, now this is going to happen. Yeah. This happens, now this is going to happen. This kid gets possessed, so this kid tries to save this kid that's possessed. True love, yay. So this Rock. was not, you're saying this was not an M. Night Shyamalan film? There was no twist. Okay. Though, I will say, okay, did you guys ever watch The Cosbys? Mm-hmm. No, okay. no, not at this point. I've never watched the Cosby's. Yes, you did. Don't lie. Do you remember the little kid? The I can't remember his name. He was a he was a little boy on Rudy. that. Rudy, not, not Rudy. Rudy. Was um, it Tootie? Uh, no, not Tootie either. It was a little boy. The little he boy. Had a little face. Um. <laughs> and he was he the one? Was he the one in Kindergarten Cop that was like boys have a penis and girls have a vagina? I want to say maybe. I think it's the anyway, same. Let's just kid. say yes. Because I think it we is need to bring up kid. Kindergarten Cop way more than we do. Absolutely, we do. Um, so he, I swear, this kid looks like it's it's either a twin or they just clone this kid or whatever. But this kid is like ridiculously overacting in this movie. He is like. And let me tell you something. You will know his middle name because they say it no less than a thousand times. <laughs> no less than a thousand right. times. Everybody is say, Everybody uses their formal names. There's no nicknames in this bad boy. Was it Theo? <laughs> Theo? It was not Theo. Damn. Yeah, William Charles. And he's, and they call him William Charles. All like, William Charles. William Charles. William Charles. I wish I had a supercut of William Charles. It was <laughs> no, 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 no. And I mean, it was there were some really weird things that went on in this movie. I mean, like I said, I, the story I, I knew where the story was going, so I got to 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 kind of pull myself away and really look at some of the things that were happening, um, like Oprah's eyebrows every time they were on screen. <laughs> um, there was, I mean, it. I wouldn't recommend it. I don't. I don't. Oh, I don't okay. think you should spend. <laughs> Don't spend money at the theater. What you're saying is you got um, you got your money's worth. Yeah, I mean it was. It's a Netflix movie. It's a red boxer. You know. But it's, hold on, I have a question for you on that because to me, when I saw the preview for this movie, I'm thinking, if anything, it's going to be visually nice to look. It's going to be stunning to see. It's going to be a pleasing film to the eye. Now, is it, and I, in my opinion, I know we differ on this, but like. You know, maybe like an avatar or something. You want to see it in the theater because maybe that's the best experience you would have. I would say that, 
but the green screen is so obvious when they do close-ups on faces and stuff. It's I, it's disconcerting for me because I'm like, oh no, mm. you didn't you didn't spend the extra money on editing. Okay. Did um, Henry Cavill's mustache show up again? <laughs> like it was if, on if, Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> oh, by the way, Henry Cavill has done a memoriam to his mustache if you want to watch it on YouTube. Um, <laughs> At least he has a it, sense of humor about it. Oh, he doesn't care. Um, he's super he's well, have, have you seen the Return for Justice League? I wouldn't care either. Yeah, well, I like, I mean, you know, Superman, I, I'll do whatever I can to keep, it, keep him in the theater. Um you're going to have to see that movie about $460 million <laughs> more time. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> I, could th- I think I could do that. You're going to get more Thanks. Superman. I, I guarantee you'll, I get, you'll get more Superman. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll, get a, we'll get one more of him at least, uh, Man of Steel, so that'll be cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it, was, it was okay. It's visually stunning in parts. Um, how, they, how they move through places was cool. Um, the worlds were cool um, that they moved to or, or from. Uh, <laughs> there was just so much of it. It was just like, oh, okay, you know, this is this is fun for kids. I just, you know, it had, it had Chris Pine in it, so that was good. And he does uh, distraught, crying, surprise face so well. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of him doing that, so it's pretty. It's okay. I wouldn't recommend. Like I said, I wouldn't go to the theater, but I would definitely watch it when it like red boxed and Netflix. When it red boxed or Netflix. Okay, yep. fair enough. So, uh, so if your realtor invites you to go see it, Matt says, "Yeah, okay, do it. Spend your money on the concessions that is going to pay the the you know the checks of the people who work there, and you know." Or better yet, you you go with that group and be like, "Yeah, we're really looking forward to this." Oh wow, all these people! I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna bring up the rear to make sure everybody gets into the theater. And there's Black Panther. And you slide on over to Black Panther. I, I or hell, would, go see Game it, Night. I hear Game Night's good. See, I can't do comedy movie theater. Like I just that I don't it. I have had some bad experiences with people that I don't care to be around on a normal basis. And enjoying a movie together, mm. um, they have there's some bad behavior that goes on, and I don't care for it. And plus, there's nothing visually stunning about jokes, so <laughs> I'm not gonna, yeah, well, you true. know, you're not gonna dazzle me with your words up on the screen. There, I can, I can not sit even, at home in my pajamas minute. and not watch even it. a Paul Rudd, you know. He could, he could dazzle you. You're really ways. pushing the limits of what I'm, I'll say. I'm just, but I'm, I mean, I get what you're saying about you know, it's not like. Uh, 40 year old virgin is hiring, uh, you know, CGI wizards to yeah, put exactly. something up there. But at the same time, it's like, I've been in movie theaters, seen comedies where it's like part of the experience is the audience thinks something is well, so yeah. funny no, that the, the laughs continue going for like a minute after the original joke. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you're laughing and you're really having a good time and, and don't get me wrong. I've went, to, I've went to, I went to Forty Old Virgin in the in the movies. I remember going to that one. Um, I went to Zombieland at the movies. I, I can't really, I don't think Zombieland really had a a huge, you know, visual stunning thing, but right. it was it was a lot of laughs and fun. I just, to me, the movie is for me. This is in, in my in my opinion, mm-hmm. is for going to see visually stunning things. Like I'm going to see a Star Trek there. I'm going to see a Star Wars there. I'm gonna try to see all the Marvel movies there. Didn't all ninety-five of them that come out this month. Oh alone. God! So I mean, I'm I'm gonna go see you know uh, Solo. I've got plans for that. No, um, no, Lando. Uh, sorry, Lando. Lando with that uh, that Lando, guy. With Lola, a Star Wars movie featuring. Thank you, Um, but you know those those movies are visually built around a theater, you know thing, but like. You know, all your all your top SNL cast and they're joking it up. You know, even Galifianakis movies. I'm and I love seeing his stuff, but I just I don't know. I won't go pay for him. I get what I you're mean, saying. I, I yeah, I, I like I totally understand. It's just that, my opinion. That angle. It's just who I am. I mean, you, yeah. you guys, you know, you got different. Feel. I know what Landon's saying. You know yeah. that it's an it's an atmosphere it when is. something's funny like that. It's like you <laughs> laugh harder. It, you do like. 
There, there I, are movies. I, I, I went and saw freaking Walk Hard every time the dad said the wrong kid, dad. Like, like people yeah. just lost their damn mind or whenever John said, it's like, you know, I would like to try me some of that cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> it puts you in a different, it definitely puts you in a different mood to like see a movie like that in a crowd, especially a good crowd where they want to laugh, they want to have fun. And sometimes it's even funny listening to people who just like, some something just tickles them and they laugh like, maybe longer than everybody else, and they're still giggling. It's like, what's going on with that person? Yeah, you hear them trying to stifle their laughs. And it's like, Jay mentions having a good crowd really does build to that. It's like, I remember before the Simpsons movie came out, I won uh, some passes to go see an early screening. And obviously this was a pro Simpsons crowd because you had to enter some contest to get the early ticket. But it's like, that audience helped build and like made me walk away from that movie being like, wow, yeah. this was a fun movie. Yeah, but the other side of that is, and I and I'm totally on that. I think you're gonna go where I was gonna go. <laughs> where where like, well, I was just gonna say when when I when I want to go see uh, when I want to see a movie on the big screen, I want it to I want to get my money's worth, and part of that's gonna be, you know, do I need that enhanced sound system? Do I need that bigger screen with the higher definition? You know, do I need all that kind of experience? Because it is an experience, and. Um, so I want to go see something like, for example, Ready Player One. I really want to see that in the theater because I think Absolutely. that'll be an experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, but do I necessarily want to go see um, something like Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants in the theater? Well, maybe not. I can watch that. And, at home and of and course, have, your answer have a good, is yes. And have a good. No, 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 yes. no. I, I can watch that at home and have a good cry in private. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh god speaking of crying in movies pixar you are on notice i just watched coco if the incredibles <laughs> 2 makes me cry i am straight up out because coco had me sobbing like a child that's what i've heard that's what I've oh heard. my god yeah. like, that's like, why coco i've avoided is, it <laughs> it is so good but it's like i, I mean, can't handle up at some points well yeah, the, yeah the first 15 and toy story 3 god the oh toy god story. toy story 3 when they were holding oh, hands yeah. and getting Into ready for the death i'm like no I yeah. No. That's one of the most heartbreaking moments where they're like accepting their fate. Accepting their fate. Yeah. I, I was in it. the theater. I literally almost left. Yeah. I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. But you're talking Dude. to a guy who, for some reason, got misty eyed over the crudes at one point. I have no idea why. Were you on drugs? Uh, <laughs> I'm broken. I think me, yeah. me and ah. Chase went and saw that one, and we were just kind of like just watching. Yeah, I mean it was an okay movie. It was, I mean, it had some funny parts, but it was more of a well, that was that was okay. So I can tell you the part. You remember when they were trying to get across the big chasm, and they all yep, made I they exactly all made it. Going. Yeah, they all made it across. They didn't know if the dad was going to make it. That was the part. That was what got me. Oh God! Speaking of dads uh, and and crying, uh, y'all y'all will make fun of me for this Armageddon. I uh, <laughs> I started to tear up at the end. <laughs> It's like yeah. Ben Affleck loves crackers. <laughs> no, ben Affleck loves Liv Tyler's dad so much. Who's also John McClane. Oh right. God! I think you were just sad because you thought you might have lost Bruce, Bruce Willis. Yeah, please don't let this be real. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of avoid movies. You, you talk about Armageddon. It, it brings to mind um, uh, the guy that was in Green Mile. I'm trying to think of his name. You know Michael how? Clark I, I, yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of avoid movies with him in it because it makes me so sad that he's not here anymore. Yeah, it is tough. Yeah, I'll like Tommy Boy is is one of my favorite comedies in the entire world, but there are parts oh. uh, of that. It's like, especially when when Chris Farley is sitting in the boat talking to his dad. Like, oh yeah, uh, yeah. It's, like, it's just oh god, just like like thinking about it. Like, oh, are we gonna have a good cry Chris, session Chris right Farley now? Is that day. what we're doing? It's time to have a good cry session. Let's do it. <laughs> Yep, just a little uh, sob, sob yeah, session. If that's what we're doing, I'm gonna go upstairs and get my uh, my cab and uh, and and a pint of ice cream. There you go. <laughs> I got a box but, of chocolate. But no, no, right I, I am gonna go get some alcohol. So y'all talk amongst yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I was I was, I was gonna say uh, the the one thing I will say about movies though that I thought you were gonna go with is that I feel like movie experiences make me feel for movies a different way than I would normally. Yes, it's true. Absolutely. Like I would like, like, like we were talking about, you were talking about, you were confused on how you felt about star Wars mm-hmm. and you didn't, you weren't sure. And I think it's because everybody in that theater wants it to be good. Yeah. wants it to be dazzling. And, and you, you come out and it's like, well, I think that was okay. And then you watch it. I'm not saying star Wars, but you know, any yeah. movie, it's like, man, that was okay. You watch it again, you're like, that really wasn't that okay. I didn't, mm-hmm. I wasn't into that. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
You're reminding me of my experience seeing the prequels in the theater, which was... <laughs> you want it to be... I want this to I be so I desperately please. wanted those to be good. You know, that's my argument to this day when someone will say to you, oh, you just don't like them because that's, that's what everybody says about those movies. No, I experienced it. I lived it. I went to the theaters wanting those movies, desperately mm-hmm. wanting those movies to be great, and coming out every time going, what the hell... What is going on? I remember seeing the first one. I was like, okay. And in my mind, I'm I'm kind of an optimist when it comes to things I know there's going to be more of. I'm like, okay, setting the stage. Mm-hmm. Got it. That's what we were doing. You know, I was like, got it. Okay, a little background. Got to know the characters. Got to get Ewan McGregor in there. Yeah. You didn't have to kill off, you know, Qui-Gon Jim, But that's cool. I get, you know, okay. Yeah. See, there's something bigger here. And then we went and saw the second one. I was like, okay, fifth <laughs> element. Still have a little Man. hope. Yeah. I, well, after the second one, I was like, I don't understand why we had the first one. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I'm like, okay, they're going to combine these two in the third one. And then it's all going to make sense. And it's all going to be something. Mm. And my buddy who was already like a curmudgeon about it is like, I don't know, man. It's not really good. I didn't really care for this one. And I was like, uh, you know. And then the third one came out, and I was like, we went and saw that one. I was like, yeah, I I don't. And, I mean, there was already, you know, first one was on blast by the time third yeah. one came out. Oh, yeah. And I was like, uh, well, you gave it a good try. Yeah. Well, that uh, happened. <laughs> that was the end of Star Wars. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, yeah. he completed the story. You know, Circle is complete. Yep, yeah, right. And I feel empty inside. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, when's that Star Trek coming out? Right. Insurrection? Cool. And then that was disappointing. So <laughs> it's a pretty disappointing sci fi year there. It really was. It was <laughs> those were those were the dark times. Those were the dark times. They were. So. It's the Star Wars dark times, the sci fi dark times. I but feel the- like I feel like, and and as far as sci-fi goes right now, I feel like TV, movies are doing great, but TV is really taking sci-fi to a new level. I think the reason for that, too, is the affordability of the technology to make a good product. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The the products we're getting for sci-fi right now are fantastic. Mm Mm-hmm. I agree. On some levels, that, it it can't help script writing. I can't, you know, they can't save that. You still got to get people to write dialogue. But as far as, you know, my, my, my screen in my house, you know, on my couch, I'm loving, I'm loving life right now. You know what I think is happening is I think it's a Netflix effect, too, because we're getting mm-hmm. such a, such a uh, I would say, a better product um, than we used to through things like Netflix, Hulu, things like that. And then, and then yeah. also the TV products are getting better because of exactly what we're talking about, the affordability of the technology to make these things even better on our home's TV set. So we are much more critical when we go to the theater because it's supposed to be such a drastic improvement mm-hmm. of the experience. I, so I, I believe that because of how like really critical people are of like plot yeah. and storyline on a movie. When it's like, yeah, you don't have 13 episodes to yeah. binge watch yeah. to expand that story out. You got two hours. Yep, it's true. So, Binge watching is changing the way we consume uh, visual entertainment. I, I think you're absolutely right about that. So, um, I know, I Landon, wondered- Landon, you've come back with your drinks. Any, <laughs> any opinions on this? Uh, I was going to jump in, and this might be a transition point, because uh, I did find my whiskey, and I have been binging on a Netflix television show where the uh, one of the, uh, I guess, co-stars of the show might, at, might as well be whiskey. There you and go. that is season two of Jessica Jones, talking on binging, yeah. both watching and drinking. And I know, you, I know you're not done with it yet. You're about halfway through, you said, but just general impressions. And so I guess this means you did finish season one, correct? Uh, I actually haven't oh. finished season one. How did but you? What? How are you watching two? I watched one of those like recap, like previously on Jessica <laughs> Jones, know. and and I will say, if you have not watched the Defenders, because this is something my girlfriend discovered. Uh, if you have not watched the Defenders, 
you can go right into Jessica Jones season two. The Defenders, as of now, is completely contained within itself. Okay. So yeah, there's, and they, no, there's no bleed over into Jessica Jones season two. Uh, we haven't, you know, obviously gotten season three of Daredevil and season two of Luke Cage and yeah. Lol. Which is, Iron- well, two is soon. Well, I have, uh, April, I, May? I, I mean, don't know. Have, have soon. they announced a season two for Luke Cage? I'll, I'll continue your thoughts. I'll, I'll, I'll look that up for us. But well, yes, uh, I still have not finished season one. And part of the reason I finished or I haven't finished season one, somebody online I was talking to about uh, about Jessica Jones and they made the point. It's like season one is about dealing with abuse. And it's like part of the reason I didn't finish season one. And this might be speaking to the quality of the show and how it was shot is like. It just straight up made me uncomfortable in some situations. Yeah. Like Kilgrave mm. is a great villain, but yeah. some of the stuff that he forced, like like just talking about it, makes my skin crawl. And ugh. yeah, I'm, yeah. Where, I'm with you. And and it doesn't deal with it. Doesn't make me feel gross and creeped out in season two. So I am enjoying it more than season one. That said. I now want to go back and finish season one. I want to power through it because Kristen Ritter, like we, like we've talked about how uh, Robert Downey Jr. was born to play the role of Tony Stark. Yeah. Kristen Ritter as Jessica Jones is right up there. In my opinion, when it comes to casting, she is amazing as Jessica Jones. Yeah. Like, I, I, and part of the reason I want to go back and watch season one is so I can get more of Kristen Ritter as Jessica Jones. There are some really intense moments, especially as they wrap up season one. Um, I think they did a really good job with the the season one finale. Um, it wrapped up really well, and it was it was to the point where they they had me sold on a couple things. They 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 did. I, I bought into a couple things that were happening, and they got me. Um, but um, man, yeah, I really think you. I think it'll pay off for you to do it. So yeah, power through it. I, I wondered if it was because because we didn't discuss that when you said you hadn't finished it before. If you just weren't that interested, but. No, no, yeah. I was interested, but it made me like, like, I think we talked about leading up to the Oscars about how Get Out made me feel yeah. a way a movie hadn't in a long time. And I think Jessica Jones is similar in that aspect. And it made me feel so uncomfortable and and it made me hate this character of Kilgrave so much that, yeah, I wanted to see him get his. But to get to that point, like. Ugh, just, yeah. just, just made me go through some stuff that I just wasn't comfortable doing. Yep, I got you. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I really like what they're doing so far uh, in season two of Jessica Jones. I'm only about seven episodes through. The last episode I watched was episode seven, aka "I Want Your Cray Cray." <laughs> oh God! Yes, <laughs> once again, I want. Your cray cray. I'm going to leave title. it at that. It's the dumbest thing you've ever heard. Mm-hmm. But in spite of that being the dumbest thing you've ever heard, I am looking forward to finishing Jessica Jones season two. And and they're in season two uh, more so than what I saw in season one. It really feels like they're fleshing out the supporting cast around Jessica. You're you're uh, more drawn into Trish. Trish has more to do. Uh, you you got Malcolm uh, working with Jessica, and uh, Hogarth is still working on the periphery doing stuff and and you get some backstory of Jessica Jones and I really like the story that they're telling uh like I said I'm only through episode 7 but I'm super excited to see where it goes and I'm assuming there's going to be a season 3 because I mean everything I see online it's it's being received very well and once again everybody loves Kristen Ritter as Jessica Jones so I want to I want to finish season two and see where it goes, because it seems like season two is telling more about these characters. Like I said, they're fleshing them out. They're making yeah. them feel more whole. And and other characters than Jessica are going through some serious, serious stuff. So I, I, I want to see the payoff and I want to see how it continues forward. And I'm hoping eventually we get to the point where Luke Cage and Jessica Jones just hang out all the time. Like like I, I, I want more of those two sharing screens together. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're entertaining to watch as a duo for sure. They're, they've got good chemistry on screen. Mm-hmm. They know? really do. Like it just uh, it, it feels good to watch them. You know, guy who plays uh, Luke Cage. I think his name is Mike Cottle. I apologize if I'm saying uh, the last name incorrectly I, I, again. Col- yeah, I think that might be it. I'm, I'm only reading it now. When you said it, I was like, "Is that how you say that?" <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you I literally apologize. tell me anything. Obviously, I apologize. So I'm in the clear. 
There you go. It's kind of like saying with, say all due respect, with all due respect, all due respect. Exactly. I can now say whatever I want, <laughs> but it's that's like, I, 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 I feel like casting him was also on the level of, uh, of Tony Stark and, and Kristen Ritter, uh, y- you know, yeah. those type of characters. It's like, I can't imagine anybody else playing Luke Cage now. And it's like, we talked about it last week. I, and I even asked the question is the bloom off of the Marvel shows. It's like, I have noticed as these shows continue to go on, the tone gets darker and darker Mm -hmm. and darker and darker. So I'm wondering eventually, are we going to get to the point where, I mean, it's like I talked about how I was uncomfortable in season one. I kind of feel like I was, I was the exception to the rule. Is it going to keep going down that dark rabbit hole to where people are like, you know, I really like what they're doing, but this just makes me feel dirty. I don't think, I don't think they're there yet, but it's like, I mean, just talk like think where we started with Daredevil season one. I'm, I mean, it was never, you know, sunshine and lollipops. But at the same time, it's like since season or episode one of season one of Daredevil, like it's like there's been so much gross and darkness happened in this small universe. So I'm kind of curious if they're going to continue down that path or are we going to eventually see one of these shows come along kind of like guardians of the galaxy did kind of like ant-man did kind of like thor ragnarok did to the marvel cinematic universe where yeah there are still stakes you know you know life and death blah 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 but at the same time it had some levity to it it was funny in some aspects so i'm curious if if the netflix shows are going to borrow uh kind of that formula from uh, the movies but at the same time, they still have a little while to go before, you know, they need to be like, we need a fun ectomy stat. Yeah, so, I have a question and it might be a question for a future show because maybe there's a lot more to this that we don't have time to get to. But I I was thinking about the other day how just thinking about the DC uh, movie universe and then thinking about the MCU and my the thought that kept going through my head is what is it about the Marvel movies that makes them work so much better? Um, you know, and, and if you go back to pre Iron Man, pre Captain America, the first Avenger, pre, pre the, the movies of, that we consider kind of the modern MCU super, mo- superhero movies, aside from the dark Knight trilogy, I put that aside cause that was its own special happy place for me, but superhero movies tend to be a little cheesy because you're talking about people running around in tights, in these cute little tights. They're your little uniforms, and they've got these superpowers, and you know sometimes dialogue can be real goofy and things like that. The MCU hasn't had that problem, and it's just it's interesting to me because I just wonder, I wonder what it is that they've found, and I think part of it is trying to make these characters more based in reality um, and make them more human than maybe what they did in the past in in comic book movies. But anyway, it's just, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say uh, that we shouldn't talk about it right now, but I think there's a bigger, there's probably a bigger topic within that question. I, I have an idea just based sure. on like coming off the top of my head. Sure. Uh, if, if you want to hear it or, it or we can do it. All right. Uh, I think part of the reason it works is you have characters. Yeah, they want to base it in quote unquote reality, but at the same time, they never take themselves so deathly serious. I mean, like even kicking off the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you had Tony Stark. I mean, um, he, he, um, in literally the opening sequence, he talks about how Rhodey's going to uh, drive or ride in the the humdrum V while he's riding in the fun V. And yeah. later uh, on in Thor, you have Hawkeye like when we're first introduced to Hawkeye, like with his, uh, with the arrow trained on Thor, he's like, y'all better make your, make your call fast because I'm starting to pull for this guy. It's like, yes, there are still stakes of life and death. Whole worlds are, are at stake as a matter of fact, but it's still fun. I mean, hell, even in Avengers, after we think Tony Stark is dead, after he falls out of the portal and Hulk rips his mask off and, he isn't moving. The first thing he says is, hey, I hear there's a shawarma place around the corner. Uh, I've always wanted to uh, find out what shawarma is. Yeah. So, like, even though Tony Stark literally looked into the face of death and it looked like he died, the first thing out of his mouth is a wisecrack. Where it's like, on the flip side, DC, it's like, yeah, they're trying to, especially in Justice League, they tried to interject more humor and stuff like that. But it just kind of felt out of place where it's like, Marvel, that's... A, that type of stuff has been there since day one. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I guess for me, it's, they feel real to me. Like, they're still real. You know, to me, like, damn it. 
not like their powers, like somebody's going to, you know, throw somebody into the, you know, ocean from the shore. But Mm -hmm. I don't know. To me, it's just like, uh, you know, this person, the personalities they associate to them, the, their demeanors, the whole thing about them, they feel like Mm -hmm. a real person to me. And it's like, you, you know, a guy that's kind of like a Tony Stark, you know, a person that's kind of like a Jessica Jones, maybe without the drinking problem, but pretty close. Or, um, or, or you know somebody who's like Jessica Jones, but only with the drinking problem. Very true. Very true. Very <laughs> at many aspects of the same person. But um, you know these people. They feel real to you, so it's easy you to, easier for you to bleed into them because they I think they've taken the character and they've modernized them. They're like, okay, how do we make this 50s character feel you know, 2K? Yeah. How, do, how do we get there? You know, well, they're not going to say, gee, golly, every five seconds. I promise you that. So, <laughs> well, you know. and it's like Marvel, even even in uh, this uh, Netflix stuff. I mean, sweet Christmas. That's Luke Cage's catchphrase. You know mm-hmm. how you know and how it works. Times? Yeah, <laughs> because the only time he said it, he's like, I look ridiculous. Sweet Christmas. What the fuck is this? I mean, like if he yeah. could have dropped an F-bomb, he probably would have. But that it's is like, his F-bomb. <laughs> that is his F-bomb. And it's like even in X... But on the flip side, like X3 or whatever, we're introduced to Hank McCoy, the Beast. One of his catchphrases is, oh, my stars and garters. When you hear Kelsey Grammer say it, it's like, <laughs> what? Like, did I just say Kelsey Grammer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. More that's... whiskey. Anyway, uh, it's like I also think another reason, uh, Matt, when when he says it's like they, it feels like the Marvel characters are more real. Marvel had time to put down a base level and let this universe grow they gave they gave iron man two movies to grow they gave captain america his own movie they gave thor his own movie hell they gave hulk a couple of his own movies until they finally got it right with the avengers whereas like on the flip side dc i mean they just shotgun this entire thing all the way through justice league and they're like all right we'll figure it out after justice league yeah all right we'll figure it out after this man I mean, and even X Men have been. You, you've had to see them as a whole. You've never seen. You've only gotten Wolverine pieced out from that. Mm-hmm. And I think, to tell you the truth, I think the only reason you got that was because of Hugh Jackman. Oh, absolutely, it was because of Hugh Jackman. Because I mean, Hugh Jackman loved the role of. I mean, I don't know how many more times I'm going to break this analogy out in this episode. We got an hour, so I say, you know, like 75 more times. That was the perfect type of casting. That was the role he was born to play. Hugh Jackman mm-hmm. as Logan, as Wolverine. And he felt the same way. And that's why we got so many Wolverine movies, because a star of Hugh Jackman's uh, caliber is stepping up to the plate and be like, yes, I want to do this movie. And if you don't like it, suck it. I'm Hugh Jackman. Yeah. So you know, so th- what I've heard so far, a couple of things, I think I think it's like a litany of things, but it's it has to do with the right casting for the role. But also, because that makes a huge difference. Um, you can you can have a a script that is total garbage, but with the right actor in the role, they can find a way to make it work, right? So that's one. But the other is the fun aspect, because I think you're right. That's something that's missing in a lot of ways from from kind of what they started in the DC universe, which was so dark and gritty, and it was almost to the point where it's like, all right, well, that happened, but are we having any fun around here? You know. Um, no, but I I will say this on the other side of that, you know, Logan without even context is a very emotional movie. It is. Yeah. Even you don't, I mean, you know, you have to know going in that you're watching a superhero movie, you know that, mm-hmm. but going into it, only knowing that I think you could still enjoy that movie for all the serious tones it touches on. Yeah. There's not much fun in Logan. There are some funny stuff. I mean, very, in my mind, I you, know, you could probably count them on one hand. But that that movie is a serious tone it's heavy. movie. Yeah, it's heavy. That's mm-hmm. true. Yes, very much so. But the way it's written and the right actor doing the dialogue really mm. makes you feel how embattled that character is. How at the end of their rope they really are. Yeah. So definitely, definitely the first one. But you know, it doesn't have to be. I think the fun factor is how Marvel is maybe getting you to like characters that you wouldn't normally give a crap about. And I am oh looking God, at yes. Thor. <laughs> or Ant-Man or the Guardians or, of the Galaxy exactly. Without, or Doctor Strange. Exactly. Well, we didn't really care about Doctor Strange if you remember our bracketology I last week. I still don't. I yeah. like Cumberbatch, but I just I just can't. Um, <laughs> so, 
I don't know. I, I, to me, it's just it's the realness of the character. And you, you said, you know, the right the right actor. If you put really anybody else in, to- in Tony Stark, you know, the Tony Stark role, their lines are going to sound really cheesy. Yeah, I think. I so. mean, some of the stuff you know. he says is really cheesy, but it's Robert Downey Jr. cheesy. That's hilarious. Yeah. And I mean, hell, it's like. Look at somebody like Chris Evans. He was cast oh, yeah. as as the Human Torch, and that didn't work. Flip side, you look at him cast as Captain America, and he's, in my opinion, one of the more upstanding individuals in America because he's, of it. He's a better Boy Scout than he is a bad boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But but when but when Cap has to throw down, look out, my. <laughs> f- <laughs> I I Edit thought point. some of that Fantastic <laughs> Four. That new Fantastic Four, I liked some of the casting for it. Oh, God, it speaking was, of the new Fantastic Four, Michael B. Jordan. He was also the, fa- exactly. the human that's, torch. That, that was one of the, person, one of the people I was going to say. <laughs> I can't remember names. I was going to say the guy who played Killmonger. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he... The guy who played Wallace in The Wire, season one. <laughs> sure. Where's Fre- the, Freed. Where's the boy? Where's Wallace? Yeah. But, I mean, that that's the kind of, like, that guy did a great job. I'm glad he got a second chance. To be I, a part of something bigger. I have to tell you, I, I have a list of these people who've gotten a second chance to be a superhero. It's just not fair. There are plenty of us out there who would love to play <laughs> one of these characters. You don't need to be giving multiple superhero roles to the same person. Give me a They're break. They're that amazing, Justin. Give They're me a break. They're that amazing. Ryan I mean, Reynolds. Yeah, that kind of worked out, though. Yeah, I know. Well, it has in all those cases, really. if Everyone we've mentioned has worked out the second time. Uh, maybe not Ben Affleck, but that's just my opinion. What about Ben Affleck um, was okay. I've, I've put it out there before. I want to uh, volunteer it again. I will be the next failed human torch. Marvel, are you listening? <laughs> Would you want to be the thing? I'd be okay with that, but, but I want to be the human torch because I'll fail at that movie, yeah, get the get paycheck, then it'll spin me off into a more successful franchise. Exactly. Very true. Like, you'll like get, you'll get to you, be Gambit, like, maybe. I, I'm going to end up being Puck. Puck. In like five years. <laughs> Has a bald one got a second chance on a hero? When he the shadow at one Oh, point? you're right. Alec Baldwin was the shadow. I Alec Baldwin that. was the shadow, but I don't and remember Adam if he Baldwin got a... was the hero of Canton. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's not in the same family. No. Billy no. Zane was the phantom, mm-hmm. but I don't know that he was anything else except a, a really nasty jerk on Titanic. And Billy Bush inter- or interviewed Donald Trump where he said, grab him, but wait, no, never mind. <laughs> oh, wait, no, no, no. That's not a superhero. And George Bush <laughs> no, was the president of the joke. United States. Are we playing some right. weird word association game right now? I don't know. Uh, I feel Seven like we're degrees to nowhere. from Kevin Bacon. Yeah, we're getting, he's. Uh, every, it all goes to Kevin Bacon. It's right all footloose door. up in here. Let me, let me look at the bottom of this scotch glass. I'm going to find him. So while you do that, I'm looking at my notes and I'm, and I'm also looking at our time. And uh, we, we, we at least needed a good 30 minutes to get through the rest of this bracket. Um, we're going we're gonna to move to the bracket, but I don't think there's any way we're going to finish it today. But I think that's okay. What I want to do is round two. If we can get through round two, we will save the, the semifinals and then the finals for next week, which I think is appropriate because that's when the final four is going to happen anyway. But ours is going to be the Fantastic Four because we don't want to get sued by the NCAA. We just want to get sued by Disney. I'm, exactly. I'm not calling it the Final Four. We'll call. We'll come up with something better. But Fantastic Four is taken as well. You got to think of something else. <laughs> uh, uh, the Fantastical Fours. <laughs> okay. All right. Frisky sounds, Fours. Sounds good. But <laughs> if you're following along and joined us last week, we embarked on an endeavor to declare once and for all the finest MCU movie that has been created to date. Um, we did use the rankings as per Rotten Tomatoes based on their tomato score to give us our seeds. Um, and we went through a round. There are 18, so we had two play-in games. We went through the play-in games, and we went through round one last week. Um, to kind of bring you up to where we are now, round two, we've got our elite. Oh, sorry, I can't say that. We have our uh, <laughs> en- en- enigmatic eight. Uh, Great A. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> now, you you got to stick with the alliteration. Ah. Grade eight's pretty good, but but I'm tr- I'm tripping up on enig- enigmatic ache, so I need something else anyway. Oh goodness! Uh, the yeah. excitable, no, the ex- exciting erogenous eight. Exciting eight works. There we go, nailed it. Erogenous eight. Okay, the erogenous eight. Because <laughs> my um, body's ready. So yep. 
Here Trimble. are the matchups. I'm going to set them up for you, and then we're going to we're going to run through this round. And then if you want to hear the final four in the finals, you got to come back next week. And Landon always reminds me in the industry that's what we call a tease. Hey now. So oh, <laughs> so here are the matchups. We have the number one seed Black Panther going up against the number nine seed Captain America Winter Soldier. Holy Jesus. We have the number five seed Spider-Man Homecoming going up against number four Thor Ragnarok. Double holy Jesus. We have the number three seed The Avengers going up against the number six seed Captain America Civil War. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost of Jesus. (laughs) And and in our final matchup, we have the number... 10 seed, which was an up- upset, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 going up against the number 2 seed, which was Iron Man. So, we can get... Oh, st- yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting on for you to call on another deity. Uh, the point. Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, and Reed Richards. Okay. Very good. And Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> That's five. I need four. <laughs> oh. Let's start things at the top, my friends. Let's start with uh, Black Panther and uh, Captain America Winter Soldier. And I was just looking at who went first last time. And I think this will be, this is our, actually, we got 8, 9, 10. So it's Landon. I think you get to kick us off on this one. So why don't you tell us between Black Panther and Captain America the Winter Soldier who you would like to see move through to the next round? Uh, If you know me personally, this isn't going to be a big surprise, but based on the seating, this would be a massive upset. I am going with Captain America, the Winter Soldier. I'm not taking anything away from Black Panther. I I love the casting. I swear to God, I'll stop talking about casting eventually. But no, no, I won't. We still have podcasts to record. Um, But I've said when I look at the Winter Soldier, what I like about it is it's a great political drama movie that just happens to have Captain America and Bucky and the Falcon floating around in the background. It's very similar to uh, what I say about uh, The Dark Knight. It's a great uh, crime movie. It's a great mobster movie that just happens to have Batman and the Joker running around in the background. Winter Soldier, to me, even if it didn't have any of the Marvel properties attached to it, I think is a great movie. And when you add characters like Captain America and the Winter Soldier, and you're able to adapt the Ed Brubaker run on Captain America, telling the story of Bucky Barnes coming back from the dead. Because if you remember in Marvel Comics, there were a handful of deaths that were held canonical. They could not come back. Gwen Stacy and Bucky Barnes. Funnily, or I guess it's funny that in the last few years, Marvel's come off those stances. But when Bucky came back from the dead, that was one of those, oh, my God, moments. So the fact that they were able to tell the Brubaker story so well on the big screen and tie it in to everything that happened in phase one and bridge the gap to get to, you know, uh, Age of Ultron and and build and, and put building blocks so future movies in that universe can build on it. It works so well. And it's like, again, I'm not taking anything away from Black Panther. That's one of the most fun movie experiences I've had in the last few years. But to me, it's like... Winter Soldier is one of those movies, if I see it's on TV, I don't care what channel it's on, so how edited it is, I don't care how late or how early it is in the movie. If I see it on TV, I'm sitting down and I'm watching it. So for me, Winter Soldier is my pick here, Winter Soldier with a bullet. Wow. Emphatic. Mm. That was was Fi Slam Ajama right in our face. (laughs) Um, Okay. I've got the next one on this, and then Matt, you're the decider. So um, mm-hmm. this is this is tough. This is a tough one. Um, I, I I can't add anything to what you said, Landon. I think you you hit the nail on the head talking about Captain America: Winter Soldier. We we all have well, not all of us, because Matt Matt has been exempt from Black Panther. Um, exempt, <laughs> but he should. Yeah, he's. A- <laughs> Yeah, we're really disappointed in you, young man. You're gonna have to bring up your grades, and He's, then we'll bring you out of timeout to maybe see the Black Panther movie. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, champ. He should have snuck in there instead, okay. of, instead of seeing a wrinkle in time. But um, yeah, I snuck out. Yeah, um, man, I I got to tell you, I'm I'm I think I'm gonna take the approach of as of today, right now, at this moment, both of them are on. One's on TBS, one's on TNT. Let's say because those channels are carrying March Madness, so it seems appropriate. 
<laughs> right. Um, and, and they both start simultaneously. Which one? Which one am I gonna? Which one am I gonna what, watch? No love for true TV. Which one am I gonna watch? And then which one's gonna be the one that I watch the score of? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> Which one do I hop over to on commercials and then hop right back? Um, gosh, that's tough. But I'm I'm going Black Panther, and the main the main reason is I think that Black Panther deserves a vote in this round for as good as it is. I think that it it's very unique. I think it stands out in this category, and um, so I, I'm going Black Panther, and I'll allow Matt to be the decider. Well. <laughs> um, I haven't seen Black Panther. <laughs> That's right. I've seen a lot of advertisements for Black Panther, and I will say I've been really enjoying the soundtrack for most of this week. Yeah, um, good. it's so good. I could, I mean, I just put it on play and let it go. Um, but the a lot of a lot of my thoughts echo what Landon said with Winter Soldier, because there was a lot of like, oh, man, oh, whoa, holy, you know, yeah. I was the whole time thrown thrown around, and I can't, I can't speak to Black Panther, so I can't say definitively, do I think I'll like it? Absolutely. But I hadn't seen it. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of have to go, you know, with Winter Soldier, because that's all I've seen. Okay. That means... Captain America advances. I'm fine. Wow, look at that. Black Panther going down like Virginia. That's right. Number one seed <laughs> laying an egg. Um, I just well. I just hate the fact that in round two, Black Panther goes up against Winter Soldier. Like to me, if if I could if mm-hmm. I could rig the bracket, that right there would have been our championship round. Yeah. Because there's a I mean, just from the previews, you can tell how thick you know, Black Panther is with like every element you care about. And then that's just for me not even seeing it. Mm-hmm. I can see in the previews things they're trying to do. Yeah. I don't know. It's pretty fun. Um, all right, let's move on. The next matchup is going to be Spider Man Homecoming. Again, that was the number five seed in the bracket going up against the number four seed, Thor Ragnarok. I'm kicking us off on this one. I have. I have the the similar honors of being exempt from a movie in this round because Thor <laughs> Thor Ragnarok's <laughs> one I haven't seen, but that's okay because see in both of these I'm okay with the result because Spider Man Homecoming absolutely is is a really really fun Marvel movie. I, I enjoyed it a lot, so I'm not going to go on and on about it because I feel like I don't need to because my vote has to go to Spider Man Homecoming. <laughs> so so that leaves it in the hands of my compatriots Matt you get to go next I like Thor Ragnarok it was fun um great jokes everybody's doing a stellar job in it um but there's so much to love about Spider-Man Homecoming and I, I think I say it all the time I just said it a couple minutes ago about the the whole Netflix thing but the vulture in that felt real to me. Mm-hmm. Like a guy that got shunned and he's like, you know what? I'm done with it. I'm going to go in a different direction, even if it isn't legal. And, you know, he's like trying to keep his family life together and all this. And I know the whole movie's about Spider-Man and, and Tom Holland's doing a freaking fantastic job. Um, from beginning to end of that movie. And we talked about his performance, but I feel like, I feel like Keaton's performance can't be discounted because he was a great opposition that was the the wolf at the doorstep, you know, twist in that movie. You know, he's going up to the girl's house, let me meet the dad. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Crap. That was that was <laughs> yeah. a cool moment. And yeah. his and his nervousness is so kid like and so teenager. I know what you did. I can't tell anybody, so I'm going to act weird because I know. And 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 Keaton being like, kind of seeing it for who he is, being suspicious anyway. And just him as the vulture was great. So that's my vote. 
All right. Um, it, it, it looks like Spidey's moving on uh, regardless. But I'm going to give some love to Thor Ragnarok. Uh, I'm not taking anything away from Homecoming. I thought that was the best performance we've seen of Spider-Man on the big screen, and it's not even close. Uh, you guys already mentioned uh, – Michael Keaton's performance as as the Vulture is, I mean, we can put him up there with Loki. We can put him up there with Killmonger Mm -hmm. when it comes to the best Marvel villains we've seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But I just really love the Thor Ragnarok. It was was a fun, colorful movie. It had, you know, stakes, but at the same time, it didn't take them too seriously. Uh, You could tell that the cast really had fun. And what I liked about Thor Ragnarok is you were really able to hear the voice of the director come through because up Mm -hmm. up until recently – Marvel Cinematic Universe or the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the you know higher powers they've had such a stranglehold on what they want people to do uh, when it comes to their movies. I mean they ran Edgar Wright off of Ant Man because of it because he got to the point it's like y'all aren't going to let me make the movie I want so I'm out. So director and I'm I I know I'm going to butcher this name. Uh, it's a uh, Takaya Watati I believe. I'm really sorry. I'm just a dumb white idiot from East Tennessee. <laughs> uh, but it really. He got his voice through. You were able to tell this was different from everything that had come previously in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I think part of the reason it felt so different is partially because of him. And I mean, he he played the voice of Korg, the rock monster that Thor met on um, on the collector. So much fun. Oh, he's he's so great. So much fun. He's one of the best parts of the movie. I'm just like there was so much fun in that movie. Even though it's going to, you know, bow out in the second round, I do want to give some love to Thor Ragnarok. No doubt. I, I, it was. It's a harder decision than it sounded like for me. Yeah. I just, I really liked that character. He was so much fun. Borg was so fun. He was like, so hey, like I could watch a show of him. Seriously, yes. Like I, I, I haven't gotten the DVD yet, but I really <laughs> hope there's some really good deleted scenes of that character, just because <laughs> his his under like like. <laughs> He was he's he's a rock monster, but he's not, you know, an over imposing like rock monster. He's just very, oh, hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Hey. Uh, don't be a Doug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, this is Doug. He's a he's a bug monster with, 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 with blades on his arms. Oh no, Doug's dead. Hey, Doug got better, guys. <laughs> just, <laughs> just so fun. Like I, I really like like talking about the foundation. Ragnarok, uh, yeah, because he's a rock monster. It's like I'm I'm kind of bummed that this doesn't move on because it was such a good movie, and it's like mm-hmm. it's like we didn't even talk about uh, about the Hulk in the movie. It's like that. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of bummed that the, that they revealed the Hulk was in in Thor Ragnarok because that would have been an amazing reveal. You go opening night, and oh my god, here comes Hulk standing across the uh, the gladiatory arena from Thor. It's like oh here we go, but it's like. I think that's the best Hulk we've gotten on the big screen. It's like, don't get me wrong. I really liked what Mark Ruffalo, a.k.a. Mark Buffalo, has done in the other Avengers movies. But we never have gotten that standalone Hulk movie with him. And I feel like that's the closest we're going to get to it. And you know what? I'm okay with the Thor Hulk buddy cop movie. That was hilarious. Well... All your comments have been memorialized and noted, but they mean not because <laughs> Spider-Man is moving on. Yep, Spider-Man <laughs> is dunking over Thor Ragnarok in their one right. shining moment montage. That is correct. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, I, th- I feel like it's easier, maybe easier to, for you to take than what you might say because I know, I know Spider-Man's your boy. So. Yes, yes, I, I grew up a, a, a Spidey fan. Yeah. So, so while, we, while I'm upset Thor Ragnarok isn't moving on, I'm not too broken. We, we did the dirty work for you, and then you got to be a good guy and talk about Thor. Um, yeah, th- thanks for making the hard decisions for us. <laughs> so that moves us to our third game. This pits the number three seed, which was Marvel's The Avengers, against number six seed Captain America Civil War. Um, this one, Matt, gets to kick off the conversation. So where are we going to go with this one? Civil War and Avengers? I I guess I hate to say it for very shallow reasons but I like Civil War more than I liked Avengers I mean I watched Avengers a lot you know after it did its run and and came out to you know DVD Blu-ray 
and FX, um, and TBS, yeah. and USA, and every oh, other man. three-letter channel there is. I mean, I watched it more than I probably watched Iron Man 2, but I watched Iron Man 1 probably more than it. I don't know. Civil War just has all the things in it you want to watch that you really care about. Um, I will say this, though, and, and one thing, and I'm probably alone in this, I don't care for Civil War's intro. Like, the whole them in the middle of the battle doing stuff, and, and you know, the, it sets up, you know, really what the, the background of the movie covers. But I was just like, ah, I kind of, like... <laughs> That's when I go get a sandwich and come back kind of thing. You know, so, what? it, it kind of reminds me almost of like a, of a James Bond opening scene. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and some of those I'm kind of like, oh, well, because okay. they well, in, in James Bond's case, those don't really matter to the overall plot. This one actually True. does. Yeah, it's the background. I mean, it's yeah. literally the, the match that strikes the fire. Yeah, it um, sets in motion everything. Yeah. And in and Avengers, you know, we were all pumped when it happened. But, I mean, I can't tell you the last time I watched it. I, I mean, as much as it's on TV, I can't tell you. But, you know, I, I guess I'm going to have to pull the, the, the Justin here and say if, if they were both on TV, <laughs> I'm going to watch Civil War because, I mean, it's got, you know, Ant-Man in it. And, you know, <laughs> there's Spider-Man. Giant, <laughs> so, giant Ant-Man. There was a lot of fun stuff in it. Black Panther. I mean, it's got it's got everything you want. So, that's my vote. All right. Landon, you're up next. Um, if this was Civil War going up against Age of Ultron, uh, Civil War would slam oh. dunk win because uh, C- uh, Civil War was actually the better Avengers sequel than Age of Ultron. If they had straight up called it uh, Avengers Civil War, I'd have been okay with it. Um, I'm going to piggyback on what Matt said here using his analogy. If both of these movies were on at the same time, if... If Civil War was at the point at the airport sequence, I would totally watch it. Any other point in the movie, Avengers, hands down, is going to get my attention, and it gets my vote here. Uh, I spoke previously last week. I lo- like The feeling of watching Avengers in theaters opening night at midnight where all these pieces come together to make this puzzle that could have gone wrong so many places, and it w- laid out perfectly – I really liked it's like, OK, as a as a Hawkeye fan. Yeah, it is kind of lame that they jobbed out Jeremy Renner and Hawkeye for half the movie. But once Hawkeye's back, he does some really cool stuff and they kind of made up for it in Age of Ultron or at least tried to. But I'm I, I'm going to I'm going to vote for for the original Avengers. It's like, don't get me wrong. I love the introduction of of the new Spider-Man. I love the introduction of Black Panther. Uh, I loved seeing more of Bucky and and Cap's relationship, especially playing juxtaposition to Cap and uh, uh, Iron Man's relationship. It's like the the line that Captain or Cap says at the end is like, Tony, come on, man. He's my friend. And then Tony responds back, just hurt. I was your friend, too. It's like, that's a great line. Yeah. That said, the like, like outside of that airport sequence in Civil War, I think I think the the highs of Avengers are greater than the highs of Civil War. All right. So it's even. I get to I get to be the decider on this one, so I'm excited about that. Oh, I'm going to savor it for a minute. Ooh, and which, going drunk on power. Which I'm way gonna... will I go? I am mad with my moderate amount of power. Um, <laughs> to quote kids in the hall, that was a good sketch. Um, yeah. So I, I've had a lot of time to think about this. I've listened to arguments on both sides. <laughs> Well, you saying you had a lot of uh, time to think about it. That's a nice way of saying Landon, shut the hell up. No, no, no. I, I mean, you know, Matt made <laughs> Matt made some really good arguments for Civil War. You made some really good for the Avengers. And you know, there's one thing that came to my mind um, as we were as you guys were going through your your arguments that really popped up for me that that tipped the scales. And I'll tell you what it was. It was Loki. Um, mm-hmm. I love I love Loki, and I don't know who doesn't. I mean, I know all the single ladies just put their hands up. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought they put a ring on it, not their hands. Well, if you, if you like it, then you would have put a ring. Well, on it. if you want a ring on it, you have to put your hands up. <laughs> I'm confused. I don't know what goes first. I am so confused. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Um, 
But uh, I think that's tipping the scales for the Avengers for me because I, I like the big epic moments. The, the first Avengers was fantastic. Um, you, know, you know, one of the things I said that uh, made me choose Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 over Volume 1 was that we didn't have to do backstory and it was fun to watch the characters develop. We got that in the Avengers because that had already happened in all the individual movies. So the Avengers was the culmination and it didn't have to build up the story. Um, similar to like something Suicide Squad s- suffered from because they had to keep jumping in in random places with backstory, which was very distracting. Yeah, Will Smith got three intro- er, yeah. intros. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, but they're not on trial today, sir. Um, so I'm going, I'm going Avengers <laughs> in this one. And I think that I think it deserves to move into the final. F- oh, uh, sorry. The uh, the, the fantastic wait, four. The Super Bowl. Oh, wait, we can't call it that either. <laughs> it's the World Whoa. Series of Bad. Wait, no, <laughs> the World Bowl. <laughs> it's the World Cup. Dang it. The epic World, world Super um, it's Olympic. It's the World title. Series of Coke. There we go. We're covered. The Olympic World Super Cup. Is that what you just said? I like it. <laughs> we're going with Olympic World Super Cup. That's the next round. So we're just uh, gonna get sued by everybody. <laughs> no one calls anything that. That's ours. <laughs> All right. This is our final uh round two matchup, and it is the number ten seed Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two heads up against the number two seed in the bracket, Iron Man. And Landon, you're kicking us off on this one. Ugh. Um you know, if this was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, I think it would get my vote. Partially, and and the reason I'm not going to give my vote to Guardians 2 is similar to some of the stuff I said last week. I feel like part of the reason we liked Guardians 2 is because it hit some of those same notes that Guardians 1 did. Where on the flip side, Iron Man started this entire damn thing. And and even even before we knew the Marvel Cinematic Universe was a thing, I mean, yeah, they... I mean, hell, it's like even even before you get to the very end and you watch those post credit sequences where you see Sam Jackson show up as Nick Fury. If that was just a standalone movie, that would have been a great action movie. And especially because, I mean, prior to Iron Man coming out, we were used to just standalone superhero movies. Yeah, it might get a sequel, but it's like, I mean, the X-Men never crossed over with Spider-Man or the Fantastic Four, and they were owned by uh, Fox Studios uh, the entire time. So if, if even even taking that equation out of it, if I feel like if you look at Iron Man, it's still a good movie. And like I like it because it reintroduced Robert Downey Jr. back to America and the world. And it's like, yeah, y'all have forgotten, but this guy's an amazing actor. And I know I said I'd shut up about casting, but <laughs> he is Tony Stark. Let's just let's just be honest. He is. Mm-hmm. He's Mr. So Stark. That, yes, he, he is Mr. Stark. I mean, he he has so much pull in the real world. We get Infinity Wars a week early just because he asked. Exactly. That's how much pull Tony Stark has. And it's like w- talking on the Infinity Wars. We wouldn't be talking about the Infinity Wars coming out if it wasn't for Iron Man coming out and just kicking all the ass. Yeah. So I'm so Iron Man gets the vote for me. Okay. All right. Um, I, yeah. Oh, this is a tough one. It's, this is tougher than it sounds. I mean, for me anyway, I, because gosh, guardian, you were really impressed with volume two. Well, you're talking guardians of the galaxy movies are <laughs> just so much fun. They're so much fun. They, they're just, they're a joy to watch. You don't have to worry about it. You get to kick back, relax, you know, eat your sugary Sour Patch Kids. Drink a listen che- to the kick-ass soundtrack. Listen to the soundtrack. Drink a Cherry Coke. You get to dance and sing while you're watching Guardians of the Galaxy. You just have such a good time. Um, but Iron Man, you know, is, is it really is. It's what started it all. It's, if, if, if Iron Man had fallen on its face, this MCU would never have been constructed around it. Could you imagine what movies would look like if if Iron Man failed and superhero movies do not take off? Like what would movies look like now? Because the like superhero movies have become the norm. I guess we'd have X-Men like X-Men Apocalypse. <laughs> it would all look like X-Men Apocalypse. Oh god, well at that point I'm pouring another drink. Or maybe more magic mics, I don't know. 
something like that. Maybe. Well, the ladies would like that. Hey, I, <laughs> speaking of uh, X Men Apocalypse, we should do the NIT bracket and uh, and break down the uh, yes. <laughs> All we, the leftovers. We exactly. should do that. We should. Spoiler alert: Deadpool's going to win. You would, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I it'd be t- I mean, early yeah. It hey, as we've seen, it depends on the matchups. But man, I that I don't, is, I don't that know. Is true. I don't know what would knock knock it out. But uh, we are uh, living in a world where Black Panther just got knocked out uh, of our stupid bracket while it's made a <laughs> billion dollars at the box office and sits number one worldwide. Exactly. <laughs> but what do we know? Exactly. Um, We're just a bunch of bling blongs on the internet with the podcast. Oh man. Okay, I got to make a choice. I should. Somebody. Somebody needs to put me on a timer here. Some uh, sort of shot clock. Yeah, some sort of a shot clock per se. Um, Say it like Hank Hill. Mm-hmm. Some sort of shot clock. <laughs> a shot clock. Whoa. What, what in the hell? Uh, you boys were on my bench. That <laughs> clock doesn't have sixty seconds. I appreciate you vamping. Okay, I uh, see. Mm-hmm. Go with your heart, Indy. Do I need to do more Hank Hill impressions? Oh, Boy, I tell oh, you about that. Justin oh. Fisher is taking his time. You know He's what? Really think about it. I, this is one of those where I'm going to play the game because it's going to pass it along, and we're going to get the ultimate vote from Matt. So I, I'm voting Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, and Matt gets to take us home. But you know what? I kind of feel like like. That would have been your vote because, like Matt mm-hmm. said, it's like you liked Guardians 2 over Guardians 1. I did. Mm-hmm. I did. Which I find, I understand in some levels, but some of them like, I don't know. You voted for it too. You're the reason it went I to know, the second I know, because round. of certain elements of the movie. <laughs> Just throw in it but, with all due respect and we're good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was then. This is now. Okay, all right. New day. <laughs> New day. New day New rocks. Day. Uh, Bootios. So, Iron Man, real, you know, it it revitalized Robert Downing Jr. I, there may have been another role, but I can't think of it. Maybe it Charlie, was good in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, but I mean, like seriously, he wasn't Tony Stark good. Exactly. Yeah. Right, and the jokes roll off, and the dialogue works. There's certain parts of the plot that are okay. I mean, even when I watched it the first time, I was like, okay, mm-hmm. um, acceptable moving forward. And I've never been a, a Gwyneth Paltrow person. Um, I don't know. I, I I still have some hangups about her being Pepper. Um, yeah, she's not a redhead. Well, it just... Pepper has to be a redhead. I feel like she's going to flake out on us with that role. She already has kind of once. Yeah, she, I was going to say, I think she has. Yeah, and and I feel like that role is very important to his continuation in universe. And Guardians Two, the whole I mean, we've talked about some of the things I liked about it, which was the the background, you know, mm-hmm. chaos while you're focused on the foreground niceties Minutia. or, or yes, yeah. s- yeah, small situations, the the minute problems of a large scale war. Um, but you know, it, for me, what's hard is how good Iron Man was and how much it set up for you versus the whole Yondu death. Mm. Because Yondu's death, you talk about getting misty eyed earlier. Mm-hmm. I, I felt it. I felt it when he went up there and he, he said, you know, he might have been your daddy or or he might have been your father, father but he, but he wasn't your daddy. daddy boy. Yeah, and I mean. Is is his name Michael Michael Rooker Rooker Michael yeah. Rooker? He is an amazing actor. He's great. in and out. He is in and out. Um, God Almighty! <laughs> so I'm gonna push Guardians on. Oh my God! Wow! For the simple fact, for the simple fact that I feel like Iron Man's the go-to thing but the only reason it's the go-to thing is because it is a foundation film Hmm. if it had come out after a thor if it had come out after you know uh captain america i don't know we would feel the same about it mostly because those movies aren't as strong as you know iron man but at the same time i think it's just got the nostalgia pull 
And I'm starting to learn in my life that a lot of things I like are full nostalgia likes. Not because they're good, because I grew up with them. Mm. Nostalgia is a very powerful thing. It is. It's ultimately, it makes money. Ready player one. Remember? Very much so. But there's, read the book, it's a little thicker. <laughs> Zero <laughs> pictures, <bustling>. GTFO. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, I understand that, you know, and there's a lot of that in that one too, but this, I'm going to push Guardians because I feel like Guardians gave you a lot of elements that a lot of movies don't. So. Wow. Okay. We got wow. a real, we got a real Cinderella story here because this, they're the, the Loyola Chicago of our bracket, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Volume uh, 2, spot. pushing through. Uh, hey, uh, hey, they're still alive. They're still dancing. They, they, they are. They won tonight, so. Yeah, they're just waiting to get murdered by Kentucky. No, it's going to be Kansas State because they're up right now. So, uh, yeah, okay, keep watching, bling bling. <laughs> <laughs> I can hope. Um, so interesting. So here is our. Oh, I didn't write it down. It was Olympic World Cup World Series Super I don't Cup know, Super Cup um, of champions of champions. <laughs> champions. It will be of the, of the universe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it will be Captain America Winter Soldier. The number nine overall number nine seed going up against the number five Spider Man Homecoming, and then it'll be number three the Avengers versus number ten Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, which this is this is really kind of wow. a, a mirror of the South bracket at this point. None of the good ones are lit. No, that's not true. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like the South bracket. You have to wear a hazmat suit to look at it. <laughs> so it is crazy. I mean. We we don't have Black Panther anymore. No, you know, no uh, no Age of Ultron. No Thor Ragnarok. No, um, you know, it's it's shocking. Oh, I, I, I did want to say I'm going to give one of our one of our faithful listeners a shout out on this one because uh, my my good buddy Jacques was telling me that he was listening to our our first bracket show and he said he was laughing when we talked about Doctor Strange and he also fell asleep in the movie theater. <laughs> So, I told you it's like ambient. Yeah, <laughs> I I want if, if whoever's listening, give us shout outs for if you what the last thing you remember was before you <laughs> the last thing. This sounds like a <laughs> this sounds like a deposition against Bill Cosby at this point. Uh, oh oh no! no. Now you be nice to Bill Cosby. He's the greatest comedian there is, and I know great. <laughs> Yeah, it's well, like, just gotta get in there. The P.O. Get my pills. Us terrible people have to stick together. If if one of us admits guilt, we all admit guilt. But I, I can't wait for him to hear this one because it tore him up too that, that Volume 2 beat Volume 1 in Round 1. So uh, I'm not going to spoil it. I just can't wait to see the reaction. And I know he listens, he usually listens to it at work. He sits ac- across the cube wall from me. So I can <laughs> usually, I usually hear pretty quick when he's got a problem with something we said. <laughs> I know so. what you mean. Thomas comes there and he goes, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Man, me being uh, severely underemployed right now isn't sounding so bad right now because I don't have to deal with real-life no, comment sections. You. Exactly. <laughs> death, <laughs> death threats across corporate email. <laughs> so, Though I really am hoping y'all finish your conversations with be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. Absolutely. You and and that is a nice segue because I didn't set it up before we got into it. But uh, you know, one of the things we do throughout the week, we like to keep these conversations going. We like to be interactive. Um, you can interact with us in a lot of ways, and you can also keep a, keep an eye on the things that we are reading and liking and commenting on by following our Twitter account. That's at nerd underscore news underscore cafe on Twitter. Um, we also have a Facebook fan page that you can go out and. Please follow it, um, it and interact with us there if you prefer that over Twitter. Some people are fans of one over the other. We have a website, nerdnewscafe.com, and we have a forum, which I need to update because I think I haven't la- added the last couple episodes, but you can go out. Probably and, for good reason. Well, <laughs> but you <laughs> Nothing but a bunch of porn bots. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, no. But, I mean, I'm not saying I don't appreciate them, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but you can interact there. We also have an email address, nerdnewscafe at gmail dot com. If you'd like to send us something direct and have some thoughts that maybe don't fit into two hundred and eighty characters, which at that point that's really all you need. I mean, you can get a Let's good point across. Two eighty one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, 
Um, and and then follow us on YouTube. We so we we're, we've been doing some live streams of our Thursday night show. We haven't done it the last couple of weeks, um, but we but we will get back to that. I promise. We're, it's not going to be something we do every single time, but you will want to know when we do it. So if you subscribe to our YouTube, you'll get notifications when we have an event coming up and when we're going live. So, and then buy our t-shirts. Buy our t-shirts. Yeah. And send us money. Send us money. Just send us money and, and don't get a t-shirt. That works too. Mm-hmm. I'm honestly okay with that as long as I get paid. Because that's what I'm here to do. Get over <laughs> and get paid. Right. Get, get paid. Well, Landon, you're trying to do that in other ways. So tell us about your other business ventures. Uh, Twitter.com <laughs> slash Landoz, L-A-N-D-O-Z. That's where you can find the latest from me, 280 characters at a time. I also run a re- website, buttmunchchips.com. Buttmunchchips. Buddy, but the chips. Sit on a what? <laughs> Sit on a what? <laughs> I don't know. You didn't. You said something weird about chips. I was like, I'm just gonna say something weird too. Okay, take Ooh. two. Butt much chips. Oh no, I'm not taking two. That's your. That's that was beautiful. Sit on your button munch. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. That is munch. where you can find the exclusively posted Game of Thrones talk, aka Got Talk, where myself and Hunter East break down each episode of season seven's uh, of HBO's award winning series Game of Thrones. Uh, we are in somewhat of a hiatus, so uh, Hunter is going to be joining me on an. Very special episode of Near Fall Radio leading up to WrestleMania 34, I believe. I really feel like I'm going to get my uh, wrestling card revoked if I just got the wrong WrestleMania number. But uh, I say it's a unique voice because Hunter doesn't really keep up with professional wrestling, but he does keep up with MMA. And uh, this year at WrestleMania, two of the headliners are Brock Lesnar and Ronda Rousey, two people very uh, integrated in the world of MMA. So Hunter is going to be joining me as well as others, and that is going to be posted at buttmanships.com. Also, uh, like we mentioned earlier, it's going to be posted in this very fine feed where you get this podcast so even if you don't like wrestling you're still gonna download it gotcha gotcha bitch <laughs> gotcha and it is oh, and i also do uh, hits on uh the good brother will rab show off the bench on uh, wcdtradio.com that airs uh one to three central time tuesdays and thursdays i am generally on the thursday show so make plans accordingly yeah, I guess. yeah plan accordingly um it is wrestlemania and so, 34 and it's coming up april 8th so when when do you expect to drop the episode of near fall radio uh i am hoping to coordinate and schedule all of my uh segments with people um starting as early as tomorrow hopefully wrapping up the recording next week i'm thinking the first week of april is when that episode is going to be posted probably wednesday i'm, I'm going to try and make it not drop on the same day as uh you know this fine podcast so i'll i'll stagger it and figure it out but keep an eye out for the first week of april sounds good all right matt what what are you trying to get over um well yondu's death but uh <laughs> never forget we're uh still doing track and track podcast we are definitely on hiatus as in the season is on hiatus uh, sounds like we'll be able to catch uh, the uh, Near Fire Radio show, so that's probably what we're going to listen to. There you, you go. Hey, too. it's WrestleMania <laughs> season. Uh, you can sign up for the Gotta WWE Network uh, free 30-day subscription, and that does include WrestleMania 34. There you go. Uh, we are looking to do uh, uh, the first movie of Star Trek, uh, the motion picture. Uh, we're still trying to figure out timelines. Uh, me and Thomas are trying to coordinate that. Uh, that'll be the next thing we drop and probably another movie after that. It's going to be random when it happens. So you're going to have to keep looking out for it, uh, at trekking Trek pod on Twitter. I will definitely let you know there. And then tracking Trek podcast, um, on Podbean if you want to find us there and catch up and get into the season. So, you know what we're trying to identify a seventies movie with. Um, so uh, join us there, and like I said, Tracking Trek podcast. Sit on your butt. Nope. And oh, sorry. Trek? <laughs> or, or do you pod? Um, you can track us along. <laughs> it, no, you by should, the way, you should have said uh, you can get f- Good. Also, Ooh. edit. Yeah, that, you can't have that as a tagline. It would just be a, a bleep. All hey, you know what? I'm I'm still gonna make uh, Nerd News Cafe down to. F- work okay <laughs> dtfnnc yeah i feel also, like it should be a shirt that looks like something lmfao made I like the little neon letters and no uh, no okay. thank you no thank you <laughs> no takers cool it's all right well on that happy note 
I want to say, <laughs> I want to say, uh, I'm sexy and I know it. No, no, no more L- LMFAO. <laughs> um, thank you all for listening. It's been a lot of fun. Like I said, like, subscribe, rate, review, do all those things. We appreciate everything you do for us. We'll keep doing what we do for you, and we hope to see you back here next week. In transmission. Oh yeah. Snap into it. Creep <laughs> the